Do you think it's fair for you to compete in the women's category? Absolutely. Why? Why not? Your silliness is limitless and it would benefit your tendencies if you could just focus a little bit in the Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about trans athletes, which is something that I've been meaning to talk about for quite a while. However, given everything that's happened recently in the Olympics, I think now is about the right time. Competitive sport is divided on the basis of sex due to differences in male and female athletic ability. Compared to females, males have higher lean mass, less fat, more muscle mass, higher strength, longer bones, a narrower pelvis, stronger tendons, higher lung capacity, and higher cardiovascular output. The more upper body strength is required in a sport, the larger the male performance advantage is. In this clip, we see Terry Miller, a male who identifies as a woman, racing against young women at high school level. The male sports performance advantage ranges from 10 to 50 percent, and testosterone suppression reduces the muscle mass and strength that accounts for a majority of this sports advantage by only 2 to 12 percent. I'm being bashed by the media, I'm being bashed by um, all the conservatives, I guess you can say, and I honestly don't even consider myself as trans, I just consider myself as a female, and it's unfair because that's the, um, the scientific definition that describes what or who I am. And much like other trans women in sports, Telfer has no understanding of what female or male is. If, in fact, Telfer is a female, then how is it possible for Telfer to transition to female? It isn't possible. Because without gender identity, we wouldn't even be debating whether or not trans women belong in female sports. Which, by the way, I'm going to emphasize this quite a lot throughout my video, but the reason that I'm going to mostly focus on trans women is because the debate is whether or not biological males have an advantage should be allowed in female sports. And when a biological male comes out and says that they're a trans woman, that they are a woman just like anybody else, that is why we're talking about this. You don't really hear the debate being around trans men at all, actually, and that's because biologically, females do not have an advantage over males. Females would have to work twice as hard, even after transition, to keep up with males. And just kind of to throw this as an example, if trans men are men no different than biological males, why aren't we seeing trans men breaking any sort of records, and why aren't we seeing a trans man at the Olympics powerlifting? In this story, world records are actually broken, so this story is kind of a case in point of what might happen when a transgender lifter does transition from male to female and compete with other females. So let's talk about what gender identity is and what a trans woman is. Gender identity is defined as a personal conception of oneself as male or female or sometimes both or neither. The biggest difference here is understanding how gender identity is how you feel on the inside. Regardless of how you present that identity to the world, your internal space feels a certain way about what your gender identity is. So gender identity is that internal little voice, that internal sense of knowing. It's just what your gender is. There's not a great way to describe it other than to ask you, like, what is your gender? For people out there, let's say you're a woman, it's that part of you that just, like, knows that you're a woman. For me, figuring out how I did or did not fit into gender norms was enough for me to determine that I'm probably not a girl, but I still went back and forth on what I actually thought my was. Trans woman is a woman who was assigned male at birth. My name is Monroe Bergdorf and I identify as a transgender woman. My name is Lara and I identify as a transgender woman. My name is Alice and I identify as a straight transgender female. My name is Ashley and I identify as a non-binary trans woman. Transgender women, despite how they identify, are males because sex and gender identity have absolutely nothing to do with each other. So my question to you is, are trans women women? Are trans women biological males? Are trans women trans women? Now, if you ask me, there's two out of three that I would say are factually true, but most people nowadays say that there's only one that's true in that, which is trans women are women. But the problem with that, though I do acknowledge that obviously some trans women assimilate and pass so well that socially they are seen as women, is that biologically they are not. Doesn't that then make it untrue that trans women are women in the same exact way that a female who is born female is a woman? Only one of these can be right. The reason that I'm bringing all of this up and breaking it down the way I am is because 
The terminology that we use to describe trans women matters quite a lot when we're talking about sports. When you're talking about a trans woman to describe a woman, most people, your ordinary average person that doesn't really follow the trans discourse, will assume that when you say trans women, what you're talking about is a biological female, when in fact, that's not entirely true. So not only is it important to discuss whether or not biological males have an advantage over females in sports, but it's also important to discuss how much does it serve us as a society to understand women and trans women if we're going to describe them in the same exact way to convince everybody that trans women are women, which is actually a very clever way for, once again, the average person that doesn't follow trans discourse to be convinced that, oh yeah, trans women are women. Why? Because that's what people say, and also because I see them as a woman, therefore they are women. And as I stated earlier, socially they might be recognized depending on how much they pass as women, but biologically they are not. Factually, they are not, and therefore do trans women belong in female sports? The people who oppose my existence still want to think of me as male. They use the language of that I'm a man, and so there's this stereotype that men are always stronger than women and so if you think of trans women as men then you think there's an unfair advantage a fair game in sports has never been about how somebody feels about their sex it has always been what their sex is and when we're talking about gender identity what does that mean it means different things to different people they describe how they feel about their gender identity in different unique ways now, once again, I'm not here to twist anybody's arm over whether or not gender identity is real or whether or not you believe the right thing. I don't care. I'm simply trying to state the facts here. And the fact is, gender identity is a belief. Now, let's take a quick look at how gender identity has been impacting females in sports. And coming down the line over the top, McKinnon takes it into world champion, O Canada. The worst part about the inclusion of males in female sports isn't just the fact that women are losing opportunities, but it's also that women cannot express how they truly feel about males included in female sports. But as you can see in both of these pictures, the discomfort, the body language of most of the women in it are not comfortable or welcoming a male in female sports. So I decided I wasn't going to disrespect the race organizer or my country on the world stage, and I smiled for the podium photo. But I knew I needed to start fighting to change the rules. I definitely don't think that that contest was fair because the winner had been born male and had gone through male puberty and had retained all the advantages that that entails. At six foot two, weighing 100 kilos and blessed with a mighty kicking boot, Hannah Mouncey should have been a shoe-in to play at the elite level of the women's Aussie rules competition. But late last year, the AFL said no. And it's completely mind-boggling that anybody could look at this and think there is absolutely no male advantage. This is Hannah pre-transition competing in the male category of Australian handball with hardly a struggle. And here is Hannah after transitioning competing in the female Australian handball category. Oh, and knees and that's oh. it, Fallon Fox, holy cow, oh. game over. In the year 2013, Fallon Fox, a transgender woman, defeated MMA opponent Erica Neeson within 39 seconds. Neeson later said she was never told that Fox is trans. According to Fox, she was never asked about her gender identity and labeled herself female on the license application form. Every woman in this tournament better look out, I'm freaking coming. And to nobody's surprise, Fallon Fox apparently does like to beat on women. In 2017, his ex-girlfriend, Amy Pearson, filed an order of protection against him. And in fact, Fox was actually arrested twice within a year, once for domestic battery, then again for attempting to violate the order of protection. This ain't right. She's gonna kill somebody. So look, Tamika Brent decided to step up and say, I'll fight her, and oh my God, wasn't that a huge mistake? According to the reports, everything happened in the first round. Within the first two minutes, it was a messy, bloody fight and not easy for everyone to watch. During the fight, Tamika suffered a concussion and a fractured 
her orbital bone in her skull and Fallon Fox did not stop until Tamika Brents was finally TKO'd. After the fight, she received several staples in her head. Tamika Brents gave an interview and said, I fought a lot of women and have never felt the strength that I felt as I did that night. I can't answer whether it was because she was born a man or not because I'm not a doctor. I can only say I have never felt so overpowered ever in my life and I am abnormally strong female in my own right. I still disagree with Fox fighting. Any other job or career I say have a go at it. But when it comes to a combat sport. I think it just isn't fair. Now in this next part, we're going to talk about Laurel Hubbard and we're going to discuss what happens at the Olympics, why it matters, and why it still proves that males do not belong in female sports. In 2019 at the Samoa Pacific Games, Laurel Hubbard took gold, which for some was a breakthrough and for others it was heartbreaking because everybody expected Stowers, which is her last name, I can't pronounce her first name, to take gold. In an article from the Samoa Observer, it reads, This is a young woman who has had to endure tremendous difficulties in her childhood, where she eventually entered the Samoa Victim Support Group to end up where she is today. It's an incredible story. All right, so let's kind of break this down. You mean to tell me that somebody who used to compete against men is a man and later transitions to identify as a woman jumps into powerlifting against females after a 15-year break as a 43 year old at the olympics holy shit is is this not blatantly obvious that there's a fucking advantage here i'm not even sure how anybody could do that and look at themselves in the mirror without feeling just utter disgust because what you're doing is just wrong in the case of hubbard who actually completely failed at the olympics people are saying one of two things either a they did it on purpose. So in other words, what they're saying is Hubbard deliberately lost to prove a point. Or two, the other point being that, you know what, trans women are women, which is why Hubbard belongs in female sports. And as you can see, because they lost, there actually is no advantage that trans women have over women, which isn't the reality of it. And in fact, that's not the point. And as I said earlier, there are biological sex differences and they do matter. And just because somebody doesn't win doesn't mean that they don't matter. In fact, what it actually means is two things. Hubbard, being 43 years old, being able to still somehow get to the Olympics should tell you that there absolutely is some advantage that a male has over females. And the other point that I want to make is that Hubbard, regardless if they won or lost, replaced a female in female sports. She's not going to dominate the competition. She didn't. She won no Olympic medals. But still. She took the place from someone. She took a spot from Tracy Lambrace. She was told... You won't be selected as the New Zealand super heavyweight weightlifter because Hubbard is better than you. This isn't fair. She and others aren't happy, but most stay silent. Because every time we try to voice it, we get told to be quiet. And in case you forgot the history of sports, the history of specifically females in sports, let's recap just a little bit. Less than a month after British women finally gained voting equality, the 1928 Amsterdam Olympic Games began, featuring, for the very first time, five women's athletics disciplines. 16-year-old Betty Robinson won the 100 metres to become the first female Olympic track champion. And the reaction to seeing women out in the sporting arena was, um, this isn't ladylike. Men still dominated the IOC, who wouldn't have a female member until 1981, and as a result, there was a lost generation of sportswomen. Diane Leather is a great example of how women missed out on being Olympians as a result of the 1928 ban. She was the first woman in the world, a British athlete, to run under five minutes for the mile. And she did that around the same time as Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile. And yet who's heard of her? Who knows of her achievement? Knowing the history of women in sports, we can conclude that women have absolutely no obligation to include men in women's sports. Not only because of the biological sex differences, but because women fought long and hard to gain the rights they did. And yet somehow all of this has been forgotten because there's this thing now called gender identity, which apparently erases not only sex, but the history of women. 
Anne Packer's 800 metres victory had been a surprise, but for the press, she was the plucky outsider, triumphing against the odds to claim the first athletics gold medal ever won by a British woman. Anne Packer's going to take the gold medal! It's Anne Packer, Great Britain! And obviously as somebody who is trans, I understand how it might sound, but here's the thing, and something that I think most people tend to forget, especially the media when they're talking about this. The debate isn't about whether or not trans people should be allowed to play sports, whether or not trans people belong in sports. It's about the biological sex differences that don't disappear when you transition. And because it is a common and scientific fact that there are two sexes, that there are females and males, and there are biological sex differences here, everybody knows that despite somebody saying that they identify as a woman or man, that their sex is still there. Mary Rand represented a different obsession. She was the perfect combination of power and beauty and became the first woman to leap over 22 feet. Mary Rand stands poised to jump her way into Olympic history. Oh, a beautiful jump. It looked to me like the first 22-footer ever by a woman. So whether or not you believe that trans women are women and trans men are men, it honestly doesn't matter because the debate is about sex. Sex spaces, sex segregated sports, sex, not gender. But even if we were talking about both sex and gender, the problem with that in itself, as we've seen in other videos I've made here, is that trans activists cannot decide whether or not sex is real or isn't. Because some trans activists will say that sex and gender are different and they're not the same. While others might argue that sex is a social construct, sex isn't real, and everything is about a gender identity. So knowing that, where do we go from here? How do we decide who belongs in what sports, how do we decide what category people are in, and how do we safeguard and protect females from getting hurt in rape shelters, prisons, and how can we protect female sports? Because you see, if sex and gender are different, then why the inclusion of males in female sports? Why not create an entire category for anyone to compete in sports based off of gender identity? Why not have a free-for-all? Because if that is where we're at, which it is, we want a free-for-all of everybody feeling included, well then we might as well have a category where that could exist, but don't fuck with sex-segregated sports because they were created that way for a reason. I mean, if sex is a social construct and doesn't matter and has been erased, then there is no such thing as female or male in sports. It's just sports, in which case men will dominate because of the biological advantage. And if when I'm talking about men dominating in sports, you're thinking, that's true, trans men will dominate in sports. Well, um, let's think about this one for a second, okay? Where are all the powerlifting trans men dominating men in sports? Because I'm not seeing them, are you? It is kind of strange, and if you know why that is, uh, feel free to drop a comment down below. But for now, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and until next time, as always, guys, take it easy. Peace. Kevin Farley from the International Weightlifting Federation. This is for Emily. Uh, you went to the United States earlier this year and you trained side by side with Sarah in Utah. What was that experience like uh, then and now when you are competing on the same Olympic stage? Um, yeah, it was fantastic. Um, I was really honored to be invited out to the States to train with the guys and especially Sarah, you know, we, we get on really well. Um, we're very like-minded people um, and it was just really, you know, inspiring to push each other and um, to get each other ready for these Olympics. And, you know, I'm absolutely thrilled that I managed to share a podium with her because she's, uh, she's a real sweetheart. It was a historic night here uh, with Laurel Hubbard competing as the first openly transgender in a uh, in a uh, individual event. And I was wondering, you know, what you felt about that, and what you felt that, that it took place in in your sport. No, thank you.